In this video we're going The purpose of this video is to walk through effective annual rates on the HP 10B2 financial calculator. Let's start with the discussion of effective annual rates. The reason these are important is sometimes our investment opportunities will offer us different compounding periods per year. So for example here we have 8% interest compounded annually, 7.8% interest compounded quarterly, or 7.75% interest compounded weekly. Now in choosing which of these investment choices we'd rather go with, we have a trade-off. We know it's better to compound our money more frequently so compounding weekly is better than quarterly or annual. However, we also know that higher interest rates are better. 8% is better than 7.75. How do we decide whether we'd prefer a lower interest rate compounded more frequently or a higher interest rate compounded less frequently? This is the classic apples to oranges comparison and instead what we want to be able to do is make apple to apple comparison. The tool for that is the effective annual rate. Effective annual rates convert everything to their annual equivalent yield, which allows us to make the comparison. And we don't really have to do an effective annual interest rate with 8% interest compounded annually. Since it's compounded annually, it's already there. But compounding quarterly and weekly, we do have to convert those to an annual equivalent in order to make a comparison and see which one of these three savings plans it's going to offer us a little bit better rate of return. So, when we want to make that calculation, we can either use a formula or we can go to our financial calculator. Now the formula is set up as 1 plus the nominal rate divided by the number of compounding periods. M just refers to the number of compounding periods. Raised to the number of compounding periods minus 1. So in our compounded quarterly example, our nominal rate is the 7.8%. And since we're compounding quarterly, there are four periods per year. So quarterly is four. Now, one thing we want to be careful about, and there are a couple other things I'll mention in a little bit, but that nominal rate has to be a decimal. Don't try to plug it in as 7.8. It has to be 0.078. So when we set this up, we have 1 plus 0 0.078 over 4 raised to the 4th power minus 1. Now I mentioned the one common mistake is not remembering to put that in as a decimal. Other mistake is to forget order of operations. If you don't do order of operations right, you're going to get the wrong answer. Now, some people are very comfortable with that. Some of it might have been a while since you've had a math course. But remember division first, then addition because they're within parentheses. Then we take the quantity in parentheses, raise it to the exponent, subtract off one. And a final mistake has to do with rounding. If you round these numbers off too quickly, you're going to compound that rounding error when you raise it to the exponent you can end up with a drastically different final result. So you want to avoid rounding. And the way I avoid rounding is let the calculator keep track of all the numbers. Don't write down intermediate steps and then re-enter the values into the calculator. So let's grab our HP 10B2. Start out with the 7.8% divided by 4. 3.078 divided by 4 press equals, solve for that. And here's where I say you don't want to round. Don't write this down as 0 0.02 and then go on from there. Keep that there. Now we want to add the 1. So we just plus 1, press equals again. Now we want to take this entire quantity, raise to the fourth power, and in order to do that, we're going to use our y to the x key. Now the y to the x key is a shift here it's a shift of the multiplication button, yellow, or I mean orange shift. So now we've got this value. We want to put it in as our Y. And now we need the compounding periods as our X. That's 4. Press equals. We get 1.0803. It's 
subtract off our 1 and there's our final answer as 0 0.0803. Now remember this was a decimal so 0 0.0803 is 8.03 percent. Typically we want to express our answer to two decimal places in percentage terms. Now some people like formulas, other people want to use their financial calculator functions and all the financial calculators have a function for effective interest rate. For the 10B2, the process is to put in the number of compounding periods, set that up as your periods per year, put in the nominal rate as your nominal percentage, and I put these as orange because they're shift features, and then you're going to solve for the effective percentage. Now here your nominal rate is no longer a decimal, this is going to be in percentage terms. So let's walk through that example. Get your financial calculator. First thing I'm going to do is shift clear all just to see what is my periods per year set for right now. Right now it's one, I need it to be four. So I need to do four for quarterly and then my periods per year right there is a shift function. So shift periods per year. Now I'm set for quarterly. Now I want to put in my nominal rate. Again, that's a shift button. My nominal rate here is 7.8%. Again, now it's not a decimal. Plug it in as 7.8 and then shift non-percentage. Now the last thing we need is this effective percentage. That's a shift function again. So we just do shift, effective percentage, 8.03. So our answer here, 7.8% compounded quarterly is equivalent to 8.03%. A little bit better than our 8% compounded annually. But is it better than 7.75% interest compounded weekly? What I'd like you guys to do is, as an exercise, go ahead and walk through that on your own. You should come up with an answer 8.05 percent. Remember compounded weekly is 52 periods per year. A lot of times people try to plug 48 in there because they think well there's four weeks in a month, 12 months in a year that gives us 48 months or 48 weeks in a year. But remember February is the only month with 28 days. Every other month has an extra two or three days in there so we actually end up with 52 weeks in the year. So use 52 whenever you're doing weekly compounding. Which alternative would you prefer? 8% compounded annually is 8%. 7.8% compounded quarterly is 8.03%. 7.75 is 8.05%. That's our best bet. Not a huge difference, but a little bit higher interest rate. Keep in mind, a lot of large corporations may have hundreds of millions of dollars in short-term deposits, or in some cases even billions of dollars. If you've got an extra billion dollars, two hundredths of a percent interest is important. So we want to make sure we're getting the highest rate of return possible.